seafloor isn't the most accessible place to study. You can't just walk around the seabed like you can in a forest. So we need to use methods which are remote to gather the data for these habitats. One kind of method we use are sediment grabs. And we use these to collect mud from the seafloor, which is then either sieved and processed to extract small animals like worms, which can be identified by taxonomists using microscopes, or we gather smaller amounts of mud to be processed in a laboratory for environmental DNA. This way, geneticists can tell us what species are present at a site. So rocky subtidal habitats are different because you can't bring the rocks to the water surface like you can with mud or sand. So we have to use cameras to show us what's living on the rock surface. We tend to use videos for larger areas to cover more ground and photos to see more detail up close to allow us to quantify what we see. The photos and videos can be analysed using specialist software where we can tag and count each living thing we see, draw around them to trace how much of the seabed they cover. This gives us really good quantitative data on the biodiversity of the seabed in different locations, which we then can compare to fishing pressure models, which we can produce from fisheries patrol data. That way we can see what the condition of the seabed is like linked to different amounts of fishing in different locations. So that method of towing a camera along the seabed works really well for the sedentary species, so the ones that don't move, because we can get up close to them. But the mobile species tend to move away from the camera, so we have to use a method that brings them towards the camera. And this is baited underwater imagery. And it's essentially a bag of bait or food that the animals are attracted to so that they come in front of the camera. And we use this method to see mobile species such as lobsters and crabs and fish. So it's really important that we study these marine environments like the seabed. It informs us on the quality of the habitat and the condition of the habitat and that's really important so that we can see whether human activities are having a negative impact on the seabed. And then we can use this information on the impacts of our activities to monitor and manage the activities so that we can stop further damage from happening and protect our marine environment. So because the... no. <laughs> <laughs>